Hey there, Papper people. Do you guys even like being called Papper people? I don't, is that offensive? I don't even know. I just say it all the time. Grandpa Lanky here, your favorite and thickest registered polysomnographic technologist, otherwise known as a sleep tech. Have you seen this image in your Oscar data? See these little bumps here? What's happening? You look them up, WebMD says, you got cancer of some variety. You look them up on forums, those indicate you're gonna have a heart attack. None of these are good situations. What the heck is going on here? What are these little pressure pulses? Those are simple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save you a lot of time. There's not a lot to worry about. Those are called cardiogenic oscillations or cardioballistic artifact. Those are really, really fancy names for your heartbeat is being picked up in your pap device or in like nasal cannula if you happen to be having a sleep study. Now, how does this occur? Now, imagine I have a balloon here. Balloon's coming up, then the hole is open here. Now, in this situation, the hole is gonna be open to our nose. Excuse me, Jason, why don't you just actually get a balloon? Because Lego man, we don't have a prop department. We're gonna use our imaginations. Balloon here and it's open. It's not being closed off. I'm not pinching it. If my heart is sitting here next to next to the balloon, every time I flick it, it's gonna create a pressure wave. Those pressure waves eventually are gonna go down into my CPAP tube and up into my CPAP, CPAP device where the pneumotac is gonna pick up the pressure changes, giving those little heartbeats. And if I'm having just a sleep study, those are gonna go into the cannula that those pressure pulses are gonna be picked up the exact same way. Now here's where the controversy comes in about if you see them, what does it mean? What's actually really interesting is you typically only see that with an open airway, sometimes described as a patent airway, but your airway's open, it's unobstructed. I love this stuff, I could literally nerd out all day. Right here we have snoring, snoring is a sign of an obstruction and we don't see any cardioballistic artifact. Over here we have an arousal, they woke up finally from snoring and cardioballistic artifact occurs, they're awake, there should be no obstructions, right? Mm -hmm. They're all awake for all that. Right here, we have no obstructions whatsoever. We have no awakenings whatsoever. They're just in stage two sleep. And we can see cardioballistic artifact all throughout the entire page. Now, if we go to this page, now here's a clear, clear, what appears to be a hypopnea. We have a blood oxygen desaturation of 97 all the way down to 91%. We have a definite arousal and awakening. No cardioballistic artifact throughout the hypopnea, wake up, open airway, and now all of a sudden we have cardioballistic artifact during a period of wake. Like this is clear wake, but they're moving around, so kind of obscured cardioballistic artifact. If you have an example of an airway that is slightly occluded or slightly uh, closed off from a flow reduction, some kind of a flow limitation, any kind of an obstruction is what I'm saying, you don't see cardioballistic artifact. Uh-oh, but the controversy lives because this is the example I had when I was doing the PAP analysis. They're not waking up and their airway is not fully open. You can see the little ridges on the top. There's a lot of flattening of the airway, otherwise known as airflow reductions. They're deep, they're, you get the little, little nubbins on the top. It should be nice and rounded, but they're not but yet we still see cardioballistic artifacts. So all the literature says you only see it with a wide open patent airway, but right here is evidence showing the contrary. And yet another example of you can't believe everything you read on the internet. So basically the theories are kind of changed. In my opinion, in this example right here, you see a hypopnea, very clear hypopnea, decrease in airflow, resulting in an awakening, you do not see any cardioballistic artifact prior to that, but when they wake up, you can see it there. Now the airway is open at that point, but the heart's gonna be beating much harder because you just had a recovery from a sleep disorder breathing event. Your SpO2 levels are dropping, oxygenation throughout your body is decreasing, so it's gonna work a little harder to get blood moving. So you're gonna see a little more thumpy thumpy coming through your CPAP device. But at other times when someone's sleeping perfectly well, you see cardioballistic artifact, Maybe the little heart is going pitter patter. I don't know. But in my opinion, a cardioballistic artifact was super common when running sleep studies. You see it all the time. It's really nothing to be worried about at all. I've never seen someone drop dead because of it. And it does seem to appear when the person's airway is open more. Now, do you have a differing opinion of this? Let me know in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate that. Jocelyn, can you tell me why someone would die? You know what? Someone would die, for example, if you were buying a CPAP mask and you overpaid, that would be one reason for instant death. Thank the Lord for CPAPsupplies.com because they're not gonna let that happen. You can use 
for the month of May, discount code LUCKYLANKY, you get 20% off your order plus 100 loyalty reward points. That's gonna save you another five bucks on top of that 20% off. You can use that for any mask, any accessory, and probably the best accessory for saving your life, a little bit of sanity in your life, is a hurricane dryer. It is back in stock. This thing is phenomenal. The people that have it, let me know in the comment section what you think of it. But in general, a lot of ways to wash your mask. You can use Dawn dish soap. You can use Mask Bright, my product on Amazon. You can use vinegar. Whatever you use, you can wash it in the bathtub while you're rub-a-dub-dubbing with your little rubber ducky. But whatever you do when you get out, hanging it over the shower rack is kind of stupid because it's going to dry, kind of wet, get a little moldy, a little musty. Throw it in the hurricane dryer for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It's going to dry that puppy up really, really well. Now it retails for 180 plus bucks. With Lucky Lanky for the month of March, you get 20% off of that. That is a phenomenal deal. You're welcome. Jocelyn, when you said that, you sounded kind of arrogant. Oh, I hate Legos. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, CPAPsupplies.com. Now this subject came up because someone I was doing a PAP therapy analysis with had a ton of this going on. They were really, really concerned what was going on. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's just cardioblistic artifact. Nothing to see here. And I thought, fantastic video idea. So I want to thank the people who use AXG Sleep Diagnostics, have PAP therapy analysis with me, and further, let me use their data. It's always greatly appreciated. It's a fantastic learning experience for everyone. If you appreciate this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it in the most annoying way possible with everyone you know on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, really anything you can think of. All right, all, have a great night. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some mask bright available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Tu Chen, Edward Steiner, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks buddy to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters.